Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Awesome Odds channel. Brand new here, looking to get some things going. Talking NFL futures, but not just any futures. Super Bowl odds today. I'm Dave Lochran. Along with me is Eric Linquist, taking a look at all of the teams that we think have a legitimate shot to hoist that Lombardi trophy at the end of this season. Not just your Kansas City Chiefs, your Tampa Bay Bucks, but we'll mix some long shots in there as well. And also hit on some topical things, maybe a little Aaron Rodgers discussion as well. So uh, Eric, here we are. One of the first videos we've done on this channel, which means like it if you enjoy it, if you think we help you along the way, subscribe to the channel, help us get that number up and comment on who you think, who your long shot. I don't want you to, I don't want to hear Chiefs boxing, although we will <laughs> talk about them. Give me your, I won't even say long shot. Give me a team that's outside of the top two, that isn't the two teams that were there last year. Because outside of that, you start getting into the the quadruple digits and it becomes a little bit interesting. But how are we feeling, man? Oh, we're feeling great. I mean, NFL is right around the corner. It doesn't get much better than this. This is kind of... Uh... We're, we're in a little bit of a lull here, but MLB has been great, but God, everybody's looking forward to NFL. I think there's a lot of intrigue. We talked about the Aaron Rodgers news. You're going to have Mahomes back in the fray, Tom Brady still with the Bucks, And then a number of teams that I think we'll talk about later too, that I'm very high on here in Los Angeles. You know, when we get to the first couple of teams here, the favored teams, there's always the question of whether or not these dark horses can take it. These, these, these teams that are really legitimate long shots that don't have much of a chance. So I said, all right, before we get into these 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 guys, these teams that are just with the highest odds, what is the history of preseason odds for the Super Bowl going into the year for the teams that actually won the Super Bowl? So I go back and look, and obviously there's a lot of Patriots in there, but the longest odds to win it in the past 10 years is the Philadelphia Eagles at plus 4,000, right? So. 40 to one odds on the Eagles. That was the 13th highest or lowest, however you want to put it, odds. Outside of that, last year, Bucks 10 to one, Chiefs before that, uh, six to one, they were second highest odds. Patriots, six to one, highest odds. Patriots, again, six to one, highest odds. Broncos, nine to one, six highest. Patriots, six to one, third highest. Seahawks, eight to one, third highest. Ravens, six, uh, 16 to one, six highest. Then you had the Giants, and the Packers, that was 11 years ago, they were fifth. But you get the point. From what we've seen, there is a pattern here. Most night or most years, the teams that do have some of the best odds do legitimately win. Now, obviously, that sounds just like logic, but a lot of times when you're this far out, you say 32 teams, maybe there are a lot of teams that are going to, to pull in the contention. Injuries happen, this and that. But from everything we've seen in the past decade or so, most years, the best teams are winning or getting to the Super Bowl. Absolutely. And there's still value that can be mined out from going to some of these top tier teams. I mean, the Buccaneers plus 1000 last year, they were not plus 1000 before Tom Brady came to town. So if oh, you were no. prospectively like saying that these are the destinations for him and you were taking shots on guys at 3500, you know, if we want to be looking at the Denver Broncos, that might be a keyed in situation there, because if you put Aaron Rodgers on that team, sure, you've got a tough AFC West, but you've got a number of spots where uh, you still would love having Aaron Rodgers in that system in that spot. So I definitely think you can still find some value in these middle ranges. If you have the strong quarterback play, if you've got a defense, there's always narratives that we can look at. The Chiefs two years ago, I mean, Patrick Mahomes, nobody knew that he was going to jump on. Well, some of us knew that Patrick Mahomes was going to be incredible. But at the same time, plus 600, there's just value that you're not going to be able to mine out of these top teams. I'm going to steer clear from them on the betting board just from that perspective is that, you know, plus 500, plus 700 that we're seeing for both the Chiefs and the Bucks, um, you know, 600 at a number of books for, for the Bucks as well. You're just not getting enough uh, on the back end of that to, to really pay you off. Do they each individually win the season? Like, do they end up as Super Bowl champs one of every five or one out of every 10? Sure, they probably do in some spots, but you can get some longer numbers where if the breaks kind of fall to some of these other teams, that's really where we're going to extract any kind of value. It's so hard for me, though, to overlook the Chiefs. They're plus 500, and I'm not really sure if you're getting much value on that. You know, five to one odds. You're tying it up throughout the season. But still, you look at this team and, and people can preach Super Bowl hangover all they want. I get it. Only eight teams have gone to the Super Bowl following a loss uh, in a Super Bowl or in a previous Super Bowl year. And, and I think only three of them have won it, most recently being the, the New England Patriots. But here's the here's here's my thing with the with the Kansas City Chiefs. 
They're really, really good. And I don't <laughs> care about any of that. It, when you have Patrick Mahomes, Terry Kill, and Travis Kelsey, and a guy in Clyde Edwards-Alaire, understandably the running back position, not super important, but this guy's so much better than he looked in his rookie season. And there's no more Le'Veon Bell. I think he carries a huge load. Andy Reid absolutely knows how to make versatile running backs as dangerous as possible. This offense is absolutely as scary as you get. Not to mention that they overhauled a lot of this offensive mm -hmm. line. PFF has it ranked top 10 going into the season. Take that for what it's worth. If this offensive line holds up as a top 10 line and you have the weapons that you do and you have a markedly improved defense that we saw last year, I don't see how this team gets beaten. Now, of course, you and I have a couple of teams that we will get to that maybe we think has a shot and as a long shot. That's exactly why we call it that. But the Kansas City Chiefs, even at plus 500, this team is too good on both sides of the football. Embarrassing loss in the Super Bowl last season, but I only think they're going to get better going into 2021. Where are you at on the Chiefs and where are you at on the Bucks with the two best odds going into the year? Yeah, if you had to tell me to pick one team to save my life to win the Super Bowl, I'm picking the Kansas City Chiefs yep. every single time. That's what it comes down to. It's a team that is undeniably incredible. As you said, PFF, they ranked them as 11th coming into 2020. They completely disappointed. Uh, they overhauled it completely. As you said, moved up to 7th, I believe, on the preseason board for PFF. Really like their outlook uh, for this entire season. As you said, the trio of Mahomes, Kelsey, and Hill. Nobody's going to be denying that. You have capable receivers also. Pringle can kind of get into the mix here. Some capable guys. Everybody's going to be capable when you have Patrick Mahomes throwing you the football. And they just have speed at every single position there offensively. So I definitely like the Chiefs as well. On the de defensive side of the ball, they're definitely no slouches either. So I'm right there with you. Uh, we're going to be basically betting and picking up against them uh, at every turn here. So maybe a couple things don't swing their way. Uh, I would say that they've ran pretty good in the injury department until the offensive line was really in shambles. And then Patrick Mahomes was dinged up uh, throughout the entire season. But that just shows you they still got to the Super Bowl. They were still there in a position to win it. So I'm right there with you. That would be your definite favorite. What about the Bucks bringing back everybody from last season, coming off yet another Tom Brady Super Bowl win, even adding some players in free agency, and of course in the draft. This team doesn't look to be getting any worse. Uh, are you buying into Tom Brady being able to do it again? No, I'm not. This is this is going to be one of my spots, uh, I think, this season. That oh. is the age-old mistake, and I mean age-old, because every single year he does it. Okay, so I love Tom Brady. I'm not, I'm definitely, I would say I've, I've defended Tom Brady more than not. This comes down to, this is a football team that really hit their stride at the end of the season. Seven and five through 12 games, and we saw how like down that division was comparably. I mean, the Saints were not the Saints last season as well. And they were kind of losing. They they had some bad losses in the middle of that entire section. I mean, they should have lost also that that game to the Giants um, that they had. Uh, I mean, it was just a, it was a brutal, brutal beginning of the season for them. They caught fire. They ended up making the run. Tom Brady does it uh, miraculously just about every single season. But I think that the Bucks definitely uh, they'll have the target on their back for sure. I'm not saying that they can't get it done, but especially at these odds, I would much rather, if you're going to pick one of the two favorites to be going to, I don't see how you don't click on the Chiefs. I'm with you. And hey, if it, here's a hypothetical. If I free rolled you $1,000 to put on any team in the NFL to win the Super Bowl, who would it be? Let us know in the comments. Who would it be? We free roll you $1,000 to bet on any team. So you can bet one and to 100 to 1 if you want. It's a free roll. Or play it safe. Maybe you put it on the Chiefs. Here's one that I would put it on, Eric. It is the San Francisco 49ers. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's very important that we are cautious about how we use strength of schedule. You know, I was looking at strength of schedule ratings going into 2021 uh, on a few sites based on previous year's stand or previous year's collective record. The problem with that is Take the Eagles, for example, who on paper have the number one or easiest schedule in the league, but they're facing a 49ers team that was absolutely decimated by injuries. The amount of guys on the IR, I don't have time. It will take up too much time in this show to tell you every player, every notable player, good player that was on the IR at some stretch of the season last year, some for the entire season for the 49ers. So the Eagles have the Niners. They've got the Cowboys who lost Dak Prescott, had a botched or a, butch, a butchered offensive line, and you could go down the list. So when you're looking at strength of schedule, just as, a, as a, a side topic here, be very careful about 
So seeing, oh, well, they face a lot of teams that were bad last year. Well, half of them were decimated by injuries. And the 49ers were one of them. You have Trey Lance waiting in the wings in the event that Garoppolo doesn't play particularly well. You might say, well, yeah, but rookie quarterbacks coming in North Dakota State, what do we know about this guy? I have faith in Kyle Shanahan. I have faith in this backfield. Trey Sermon coming in. Raheem Mostert is healthy. George Kittle is healthy. You've got uh, an, another year out of Brandon Ayuk. Like, this team should only continue to get better. They have a good enough receiving core. They have a great tight end. They have a backfield and an offensive line that is going to push to punish opposing defenses. It's that simple. Debo Samuel as well. And when you get a healthy San Francisco 49ers defense, which we saw none of last season, this could be a very, very dangerous team with odds right now of, uh, what is it, 14 to 1 odds for the San Francisco 49ers. If I'm going outside of the Chiefs and the Bucks, I'm going to the 49ers when we're not talking long shots. How about you? All right. Well, I'll just kind of finish off with the 49ers here. I, I'm going to be going to the same division, different team, but uh, I don't mind that at all. Kyle Shanahan, I mean, he kind of sent everybody on a wild goose chase for who he was going to take with that pick. Ended up being Trey Lance. Not his fault that he only got to play one football game last season. Uh, it's not like there's any kind of a problem uh, that I have with him. I don't know what that is. It is a huge unknown. I think just because of that price, I'm probably going to steer away a little bit, but I completely understand because if he is good, everything else is there. The offense, the defense, getting Kittle healthy, having him maintain the best two-way tight end, best blocking and receiving tight end combination that exists in the league. No offense to, to Kelsey, who is a phenomenal pass catcher, but I mean, Kelsey does things in the running game that are just incredible. Uh, you got Trey Sermon in there too. I'm right there with you. I think that it's a good football team, maybe not at that price, but one thing that did happen yesterday is obviously everybody knows the news uh, that went down uh, with the Rams. Everybody kind of just had like a big knee jerk reaction uh, once you saw uh, the injury the injury news come down for the Rams. And that number moved from plus 1250 to plus 1400 at a number of books here. And so let's just talk about Henderson because now he's the name. We don't even need to worry about anybody else. But Daryl Henderson, he was PFF's highest grading running back through the first seven weeks of last season. Uh, he's going to be serviceable. Losing a running back is one thing. Uh, losing a running back uh, for, uh, that was a rookie that kind of had a rough beginning of the, the first half to the season. I really kind of think that this number shouldn't be moving this much to account for it. There's still Sean McVay. There's still Matthew Stafford. And again, Henderson, they, whether they bring in Curley, whether they bring in a veteran to be a pass catching back like Duke Johnson or somebody of that nature, there's a number of options that they have there uh, to kind of upgrade that position. Running back, I'm not going to to knee jerk it. So, so for the Rams to move a uh, buck 50 there in that direction. I think plus 1400 is some nice value to be getting right now on them. So Cam Akers, it's so, so sad to see him go, but uh, Henderson should be filling in just fine. Listen, I like the Rams and similarly to Kyle Shanahan, who you have to have faith in a coach. If you're going into a season, you know, laying money on a team to win the Super Bowl, right? But uh, I, I think that Sean McVay is another one of these. He, listen, he's been celebrated as an offensive genius for a while, and, and I don't think that's untrue. It's just very hard to get all of that untapped potential out of someone like McVay's play calling when Jared Goff is your quarterback. Matthew Stafford is a, a considerable upgrade, uh, and I would be much more worried about him or Cooper Cup or Robert Woods uh, being injured than Cam Akers, as, as, as crazy as that sounds. And I also think Tyler Higbee, without Gerald Everett, has a big season this offense. Well, hum, a top five defense from last year. I don't disagree. I just think the 49ers are equally good, if not better. Uh, and they were so banged up last year that you can't take a single second of last season and attribute any of that to what we should expect to see this year. All right. So, Eric, we talked about this a little bit in the pre-planning of the show. Not a lot. Sometimes I like to just go in and wing it because it makes it more organic, you know. But we did come across the same team that we have as a long shot. So I'll let you hit on them first. Then I'll hit on them and close this one out because I'm not just going to throw a random team out there because it makes for good content. Even though there's one team I really like, it just so happened to be the same as yours. And if you go to oddshopper.com, everything's entirely free there. You can shop odds across all different books, player props, team futures, you name it. You got it. Set watch list, uh, bet track or whatever you want. If you go there. There are some wildly varying odds on this very long shot that you're about to touch on. 
All right, let's do it. Los Angeles Chargers, let's go. Uh, so plus 3,000 uh, on Odd Shop, but there's also some 3,500s that kind of exist around the industry here at the there's moment. There's a 3,300 and a 3,200 on Odd Shop or two now. Oh, I love that. So plus 137 to make the playoffs. So again, this is a long shot, even just in that regard. So I want to put it out there, but I think it is by far the best value that exists on the board. We can just start with Justin Herbert. It's a quarterback in his second year here who I think can make another jump. Uh, he's got now his offensive quarter, Joe Lombardi, coming in from the Saints. He worked for Drew Brees for five years. He was the offensive coordinator, had a short stint in Detroit, but then basically became the quarterback guru that existed for the Saints there. He ended up making Taysom Hill a thing. He made Jameis Winston uh, somewhat serviceable in a couple spots there as well. I trust him as an offensive coordinator. But the big part for me is just getting rid of Anthony Lynn and uh, bringing in Brandon Staley, who's the new head coach there. Uh, going to just be a defensive-minded guy. If you can get Derwin James back there with Joey Bosa, that is a formidable defense that you're looking at as well. And as far as the skill positions on offense, Austin Eckler, and then you get on the other side of it, uh, Keenan Allen. Uh, you have Mike Williams sitting opposite of him. I mean, there are so many guys there. And the offensive line, which was the huge question mark for this team, they go out and get Corey Lindsley, all pro center from Green Bay. They have a first-round pick that they use on Rashawn Slater. So he was a monster at Northwestern in the Big Ten. He made them competitive in a very difficult conference there for college football. Northwestern was nothing without him there at left tackle. He's going to plug in there phenomenally well. I just believe that at 3,500, there's so much value that exists on this football team. Just give me Justin Herbert against the field here. In the one game they played against the Chiefs last year, I'm not including week 17, Andy Reid benched all of his guys unnecessary. Uh, they lost in an overtime in that one early season game they played with Justin Herbert at the helm. Sure, it's only one game, but I think they actually match up relatively well against the Chiefs because this offense can be absolutely dangerous. You rattled off all of the players there. Justin Herbert uh, has the potential to be a league MVP at some point. I like it. Uh, the only the only thing that the only reservation I have is, and we can close it to today's show with this. The only reservation I have is, what if Aaron Rodgers does go to the Broncos? Then you've got. Then you've got the Broncos in the division and you've got the Chiefs in the division. And I think the Raiders, they're not going to be very good, but generally speaking, they'll at least put up somewhat of a fight. But forget about that. The Chiefs and the Broncos, it's very difficult to say right now, but I do wonder how much of this is baked in. And with the Broncos right now, you're getting their Super Bowl odds right around, I mean, actually better than, higher than the Steelers, uh, same as the Patriots, not much further down uh, at, at, than the Chargers at, at, on, on DraftKings, at least 30 to one for the Chargers, for the Cowboys, 35 to one for the Patriots, 40 to one for the Steelers, 35 to one for the Broncos. You have to assume that some of that Aaron Rodgers speculation is baked into that th those odds. And you also have to assume that some of the Aaron Rodgers speculation is baked into the Packers at 20 to one, because last year, the Green Bay Packers were spectacular. I had them to go to the Super Bowl. I had Rodgers to win the Super Bowl that year. It did not happen. The wow. Tampa Bay Bucks knocked them off in the championship round. But if Aaron Rodgers commits to playing with the Packers this year, I can almost feel, I can feel very confident that they vault past the Browns, probably the Ravens and even the Niners and even the Rams too. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they have the third or fourth best odds in the league if Rodgers commits to playing for the Packers this year. But it seems so unlikely and it, or so uncertain right now and almost unlikely. So that's the speculation part of this is that we can play the speculation game you want to be the you want to be quick to to jump on this team. You if if you think that there is no chance that Aaron Rodgers uh, leaves Green Bay, that if you can't get out of this contract, if they can't move, if they can't do any of that, yeah, you can go to Green Bay on this. But I would much rather take some shots. Uh, again, not nearly the volume I'd be doing on the Chargers, but the Denver Broncos for sure. Uh, what a ridiculously tough division that'll be. Chargers, oh, yeah. Chiefs. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be brutal for both of them. But you know, even for the Chargers, as I'm looking at their schedule, again, they're they're plus money just to make the playoffs here and main, mainly because of this schedule. I mean, they start at Washington, Dallas uh, at home, at Kansas City, and then uh, home for Vegas and Cleveland, both winnable at Baltimore. I mean, that is a brutal first six weeks of the season. But after the bye week, it gets a little bit better. Denver kind of sets up the same way. You have to play the Chiefs twice. You have to play the Chargers twice. That's four of your games that are very, very difficult and you're going to be well contested. I mean, even with Aaron Rodgers going to Denver, um, I think Denver's a good team. Are they as good as the Packers 
uh, just independent of Aaron Rodgers? I don't think so. I think the Packers are still probably a little bit stronger. I don't know what you think about that, but I think that would kind of shy me away from going to green or going the Denver direction either way. For sure. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that at all. And it is funny how you can see the win totals, Vegas win totals deviate from the Super Bowl odds, kind of just in the sense that like you might have an easy schedule, but then you have to run through a gauntlet of really mm -hmm. good teams. Uh, and, and you see that to some extent. I mean, the Chargers have a, uh, uh, have a nine and a half win total on DraftKings with the over juiced at minus 135. That's pretty solid, right? I mean, if you yep. look at that, it's a pretty nice win total. Uh, granted, 17 game season, things change. That's yep. a little bit different uh, to make the playoffs odds. Keep all of this in mind when you're betting. We're going to do a show on this very soon. I, I love betting teams to make the playoffs a lot more than the Super Bowl. Uh, but Eric, you have seven teams from each conference now, 14 making it and 17 games. That definitely throws a wrench into the works and makes us kind of reformulate the way we've always looked at things. But then that also creates a whole nother opportunity. And this is kind of what I think I was able to take advantage of a little bit last year was with the expanded playoff, You once the team gets in, you have hedge opportunities. You have abilities to kind of be on the other side of it immediately. Whereas before, you know, if they didn't make the playoffs, you were dead in the water before it even began. So there's at least a little bit of a safety net that exists for some of these longer shots, where if you can get them to the playoffs, then you have just enhanced odds. You can be go to the other side. Maybe they're better than we expect as long as they get there and have a shot you're going to have opportunities at a lot of turns especially if they end up getting a one or a two seed uh, for if somebody can sneak in and be that unexpected team and we see it every single year there's always a team that outperforms expectations a lot of people are on Tennessee this this season I can see and understand why you might put them into to a team that can get in the top two if you can avoid that first round if you can get one of those buys huge plus but either way you're going to get hedge opportunities further down the line more now than ever well that'll do it for today great stuff as always eric we will catch you back here tomorrow might not be the same host but the same content nfl futures discussion also on the awesome odds channel you've got the breakfast menu every single day josh engelman and ben ross are bringing you the best bets for the day no matter what sports are on the docket you got pga betting you've got so much more even some watch parties if you missed that one from yesterday josh engelman and myself having some fun in game six kind of out of date now but we'll be doing a lot of that for football hopefully you'll join us hit that subscribe button if you like this content and you want to see more hit that like button and again thousand dollars free rolling who do you bet to win the super bowl any of the 32 teams leave it in the comments i always check them out and respond we'll catch you back here soon thanks for watching